before we get into the review, I want to give you guys a quick report that a friend of mine sent me. According to my friend, he has he sent me a report in saying that it's been reported that Nikki eliminate elimination to Brie Bella is setting up for a match between the two at WrestleMania. Now, I'm okay with this. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm actually okay with this. This has actually been something that I think we need to see Chloe finish up their little, you know, their little scandal with one another. Because, if you think about it, they never really had a conclusion to their rivalry. They never really did. They never really had a conclusion to their rivalry. You know, like, because, like, Nikki won at Hell in a Cell. And then, you know, you had Nikki win at Hell in a Cell. And all of a sudden, Brie is now on Nikki's side after Hell in a Cell. Like, they never had any, you know, segue of them breaking up. So, so I'm okay with it. I am actually really looking forward to this. This has actually been something I've been wanting to see. Maybe Nikki and Bree wanted it. Maybe Nikki and Bree both said to the said to the um higher ups that they really want to sit they really want to close. They re they really want to um you know, have a match with each other and if that's what they wanted then I'm pretty sure they will deliver and and I don't want people getting all upset if this does happen. I'm okay with this. I am really am okay with this type of match. So yeah, I, I'm I'm all for it, and I'm I'm all for this Nikki versus Bree match. If it happens, it's only being reported. If there is more on this match, if there is more on this Nikki and Brie match, I will keep you up to date. If you do want to see that, if you want to see this match, but I'll keep you up to date on the Nikki and Brie situation if there is more to come. So anyway, guys, thank you, thank you for this quick, quick intermission. Now let's get on with the review. Monday Night Raw. Raw after Rumble. I'm going to say it was a decent show. It was a decent show for us wrestling fans. We had we had some pretty good matches. And by the way, um it has been announced and it 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 was clear as day. Um, it was clear as day that WWE were going to go through with it, but for now we will talk about Raw. We'll talk about Raw here, so let's get on with the show. If this computer hurries up, this damn computer just hurries up, alright? So we had... Where do we where do I even begin? Oh yes, we start from Oscar the Sasha Banks confronted Oscar Stephanie McMahon came out and talked about the history making women's Royal Rumble where we saw some returns of Trish, Lita, etc. And then she brought out the uh, winner, Oscar, who can't apparently speak English, because we hear her jibber 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 in Japan. And the only words that I knew she was saying is, I will be champion and nobody is ready for Oscar. That's basically all I knew she was saying in English. Then Sasha Banks came out, Miss... Miss 53 Minutes who lasted the entire Royal Rumble but did not win. She set a pretty good record 
Now, I don't think these women's Royal Rumbles are going to be permanent, okay? Some people might think these are going to be permanent. And the reason why I don't think they're permanent is because do you really think they'll keep bringing back the same people every single year for the surprise entrances? I think if they're going to continue on with these women's Royal Rumbles, they need to bring more people in from the main roster, okay? So, so for now, I just don't see them continuing with the Women's Royal Rumble only until they get more women. So, so I don't think there'll be any more Royal Rumbles for the women. So Stephanie McMahon then eventually announced that Alexa Bliss will be defending her Royal Women's Championship in an all-women's elimination chamber. Boy, did I see that one coming. Boy, did I see that coming. You know? I so saw that coming. Holy. Holy moly. I so saw that coming. And then, and then we get a WrestleMania-worthy match. Given to us on live TV. Sasha Banks versus Oscar. What a great way to give us a WrestleMania-worthy match. And we got another WrestleMania worthy match in our main event. Jeez, WWE just just feeding us with WrestleMania worthy matches. First match we had was Braun Strowman versus Kane in a last man standing match, completely boring. I paid I paid barely any attention. I, pay, I barely paid attention to this, and and I basically saw the whole. But I did see that. Uh, I did see when Braun Strowman pushed over the entire table. That big ass th thing he tipped over. That was a pretty good spot, though. Now, when they announced John Cena versus Finn Balor. I was thinking, okay, this should be interesting. But then when they had Elias beat Woken Matt Hardy, it all came clear to me. It all came clear to me that, that obviously they're setting up a Woken Matt Hardy and Elias and another... Um, Woken Matt Hardy and Elias. Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt in another manner, so... So we'll see what happens there. The Miz and Roman Reigns, they had another match for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, it was the same match as they had as last it was the same match they had. Miz tries to cheat, Miz Taraj interfere, skull crushing finale, and that's it. Well actually he didn't win with a skull crushing finale, that was the only difference. He did a skull crushing finale when he poked Roman Reigns in the eyes and Roman kicked out. And then the Miz uh, got a roll up on Roman Reigns after the Miz Taraj distraction. So, Mi so Roman Reigns is now done with the Intercontinental Championship. He's now done with the Intercontinental Championship. The Buried Revival. And, you know, I laugh when people say someone's buried. And then when they say someone's buried, they just start coming back and winning. The Revival win their second match since they, since they got buried. The Revival win their second match after being buried by DX. The Revival beat Heath Slater and Rhino. Just break these two up already. Seriously. What more do we need to see? Then we had Oscar and Sasha Banks in a pretty good match. I'm not going to lie. These two women did have a good match, but... Still, I, I just don't see the appeal of Oscar. 
I really felt like Sasha Banks. And don't hit on me or don't call and don't and don't, and don't say what and say whatever you want, but honestly I really felt like Sasha Banks was the more impressive one than Oscar in this match. I just don't see the appeal of Oscar. I've mentioned so many times. Whenever I see an Oscar match, I'm just not impressed. I just don't understand what is it with Oscar that people like. I've never understood why people like Oscar so much. What makes her a good wrestler? Like she's the same thing. Like I see her do the same old shit over and over again. Kicks. You know, she she does a variety of kicks, variety of punches. It's the same thing with Oscar. It's the same thing with Oscar every single match and in, and and she finally brought back the Oscar lock. A move I actually like. Yeah, I actually like the Oscar lock. It's a very painful submission hold. That's how she should be winning her matches, not with a ridiculous cross arm break. Sasha did the bank statement three times in this match and didn't make Oscar submit. Obviously. And then and then Oscar got the armbar, Sasha didn't tap. She tried to get the Oscar lock in at one point, but Sasha counted through. There was a really good spot here where Oscar, again, just kicked Sasha right in the face as she dove out of the ring. How is that impressive? Yeah, it's a good spot, but why is a, a kick from Oscar impactful? Yeah, the way, yeah, Sasha sell, yeah, Sasha's selling was good. But again, what makes Oscar so good? Why do people like Oscar? What is the appeal? Of Oscar, I still fit, find her overhyped. She's overhyped to me. She she's the same old person that she was in NXT. What are they gonna make this a thing now? Ooh, a big a big challenger goes to challenge Oscar. What is Bailey going to challenge Oscar next? Do people really care about Bailey at this point? Bailey had no reaction when she came out at twenty nine. People didn't even cheer when she came out. Anyway, Oscar wins. With the Oscar lock. Sasha Banks tapped. Are we slowly starting to see a heel turn on Sasha Banks? Seems like it. If Oscar is going to be the number one babyface of Raw... I guess, I guess turning Sasha heel ain't going to be a bad idea. Because Oscar, because Sasha has seems to be, be behaving as a heel as of late. She seems to be putting on some heel tendencies lately. So, Oscar beats the babyface Sasha Banks. Obviously, I think they're going to start slowly... Turning it, I are thinking they're building up to Sasha's heel turn. Then we had, then we had the bar. Go one, go go two on two with Titus Worldwide in a pretty decent tag team match. This was, um, this wasn't a bad match. They could have done better. It was a. It was a pretty good story. The story they told was was good. The story that the story they were telling was good. That that Titus Worldwide um, defeated the Bar twice, and they wanted to get their rematch, get their title opportunity, and they did. And they lost in a pretty good match. They lost in a pretty good match. I'm not gonna lie, it was a decent match. Good effort for good effort though. I'll get I'll give Titus Worldwide credit. I'll give WWE credit. They're really pushing hard on on, on Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil. It's something that they needed. Do I see Titus O'Neil Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews as credible tag team champions? Maybe not yet. Maybe somewhere down the line in the future they could be a tag team tag team champions. Maybe sometime in the future. But right now, I think they need to bring someone like Sanity or the Authors of Pain to the main roster. So in that way, Seamus and Cesaro can actually have a pretty good, 
pretty good uh, match for WrestleMania. But, but yeah. That was that match. And, and also, I want to point out, I really like the new graphic. I really like the new graphics that they had for Monday Night Raw. It looked really nice. It looked really nice. I'll give them credit. That looked really nice. Changing up the formula of 2018. Bringing in the few, Starting off with new, fresh, new, and fresh for 2018. That's something that I... That, that's something I really appreciated. Hopefully SmackDown Live gets a new look as... I think SmackDown deserves a new look as well since Monday Night Raw got a new look. And finally, to close off the show... We had Mr. You Can't See Me, John Cena, versus the man that's had, the man that is too sweet, Finn Bell. This was a very enjoyable match. And I know a lot of people are going to be upset with the result, but what can you do? What can you do? In the end, and I, I, will, I, will, find, I will say this though, when John Cena did the AA... And when he pulled up the two, when he did the two sweet thing, I laughed because that was pretty. That was actually pretty cool. And then he did, does DAA, and then Balor kicked out. Balor didn't hit the coup de gras on John Cena, which I thought was a very disappointment. But at the end, I would say, yeah, okay, maybe they did it to protect Finn Balor's finishing move because I think a lot of people would have been pissed off that John Cena kicked out of the coup de gras. So. I guess I can appreciate that he didn't hit the coup de gras. Finn Balor did go up for the coup de gras, however, at the end of the match. But then John Cena was fast enough to get onto the top rope and performed a super AA on Finn Balor to get the victory. So John Cena defeats Finn Balor in the main event of Monday Night Raw. Anyway, guys, that is your Monday Night Raw review. I hope you all enjoyed this review. Hit that thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. And also hit the notification bell. So that way you'll be notified when I upload another video. So anyway, guys, thank you all for joining me for this review. And I will see you all for SmackDown Live tomorrow. See you guys then.